In this video, we're going to learn about a typical speed time graph of a parachute jump. For a speed time curve, as you have learned, the gradient will represent the acceleration of the object, and in this case, the parachute is. And secondly, the area underneath the graph will represent the distance that is traveled by the parachute. Next, let's describe the motion at the various stages of the jump. Let's take a look at from A to B because it's a constant gradient just jump out from the aircraft so that will be your constant acceleration and to be exact the acceleration will be due to gravity that's a 10 meter per second square but as it go faster and faster air resistance comes into play so from the region to B to C the gradient is decreasing so it's a decreasing acceleration so the speed is still increasing from A all the way to C and from C to D you can see that the acceleration is equal to 0 but that's not being specific because acceleration 0 can mean at rest or moving at constant speed and in this case it's actually traveling at a maximum constant speed in other words this is called terminal velocity that means to say the parachutist, the skydiver, actually reaches maximum speed. Now, at point D, this is the time where he activates his parachute, it's fully open, that's where he starts to undergo constant deceleration. And as his speed decreases from E to F, once again, it will be a zero acceleration and he's moving down at constant speed. But obviously, the speed is much lower now as it's gliding down and the last part here F to G that's where he touches on the ground and comes to a complete rest so that is a constant deceleration next we're going to describe the motion of the skydiver using forces now let's take a look from A to C as mentioned just now the skydiver is accelerating that means to say the speed is always increasing and as you know, if there's an acceleration, it will be Newton's second law. So if I were to ask you to explain why is there an acceleration, in this context, it's rather straightforward because the skydiver, there are two forces acting on him. That's his weight and another force upwards will be the air resistance. And in this case, because his speed is still relatively slow, the air resistance is small. So the weight is greater than the air resistance. Therefore, there is a net force and it's precisely this net force is in the same direction as the motion. The skydiver is falling towards the earth and this net force is downwards. That's why there is a acceleration. So it causes the skydiver to increase in its speed, it's accelerating. But if you look at the whole section AC, there are two distinct portions, A to B and B to C. So let's analyze them. Now from A to B, we know that it's undergoing constant acceleration and from B to C is a decreasing acceleration. Now what does it mean? Constant acceleration means every second the increment in the speed is always the same or rather the speed increases at a constant rate. Well from B to C, the acceleration is decreasing. It means that every second the increment in the speed is getting smaller and smaller. In other words, the speed is increasing at a decreasing rate. For AB, that's the moment where the skydiver jumps off from the aircraft and the only force that's acting on him is weight. Because he just jumped off, the speed is relatively low. Air resistance can be considered as negligible. So it's basically free fall with no air resistance and therefore the acceleration will be a constant 10 meter per second square acceleration due to gravity so this weight will be the net force acting on the body the uh, the skydiver so this net force downwards in the direction of the motion will cause him to accelerate at 10 meter per second square as for bc if you're to be asked to explain in terms of forces why the acceleration is decreasing now as the speed of the skydiver increases, the air resistance acting on him will increase. 
So if you look at the Skydiver, the weight is adding downwards. As it goes faster and faster, air resistance will increase. And normally, when you need to find the net force, because the Skydiver is moving downwards, so you take the weight minus the air resistance. As mentioned just now, as you go faster, this air resistance is going to increase and the weight is a constant value. So when weight minus air resistance, it will get smaller and smaller. In other words, this net force acting on the skydiver is going to decrease. As you know, F equals to MA, where F is the net force. So if this net force is decreasing, the acceleration will decrease because the mass of the skydiver is constant. Next, let's take a look at CD where the skydiver is falling at maximum constant speed, which is terminal velocity. Now, because the fact that it's moving at constant speed, it should come to your mind that it's Newton's first law of motion. So the forces will be balanced, net force will be zero, therefore there's no acceleration. So in this case, the skydiver, the weight is there. This is the time. Just now we mentioned that as it go faster and faster, air resistance will increase. It will come a time where the air resistance is equal and opposite to the weight. And when that happens, the net force is zero, the acceleration is zero. And because the skydiver is already moving downwards, so when the forces are balanced, net force equals to zero, acceleration zero, he will just continue to move downwards at a maximum constant speed. At point D, we already mentioned that that is the time where the parachute is fully open and when that happens the air resistance will suddenly shoot up because of its big surface area of the parachute so right now the air resistance is greater than the weight and if you were to find the net force we take the bigger air resistance minus the weight and this net force is acting upwards while the motion of the skydiver is still going downwards so it's precisely this net force which is opposite to the direction of the motion downwards which causes him to decelerate for the speed to slow down. It's like a car, you step on the brake while the car is moving forward, the, all the net force is acting backwards causing the car to decelerate. It will not go backwards but will cause the car to decelerate. If you look at F equals to MA, this F, which is the net force right now, is opposite direction to the motion. So you have to indicate by adding a negative sign here. And if you were to solve for your A, you will end up with a negative acceleration, which indicates there's a deceleration. So that explains why there's a constant deceleration from D to E. As for the section E to F, it's moving at a lower constant speed and it's very similar to C to D. So it's just that now the difference is that the parachute is already activated, the weight is adding downwards. But because from the section D to E, the deceleration takes place, as the speed decreases, your air resistance will slowly decrease. So it will come to a stage once again where the air resistance is equal to the weight. So when that happens, the forces are balanced, net force is zero, acceleration is zero. So the skydiver will continue to fall towards the ground at a constant speed, but at a much lower constant speed compared to the terminal velocity at CD there. As for the last section FG, that's where the skydiver will do a final pull to the string will change the curvature of the parachute. That's where, once again, the air resistance will suddenly shoot up and the air resistance is greater than the weight. So it's an unbalanced force. There's a net force acting upwards opposite to the motion of the skydiver. So he will undergo a last deceleration until he reaches the ground. So after this video, I hope you have a better understanding in the speed time graph of a typical parachute jump and also able to explain the motion in terms of forces. If you require the explanation, more detailed explanation in words, you can refer to the comics that is in the same post as this video. So thank you so much.